Now, pupils are returning to school this morning following yesterday's teacher strike, which affected an awful lot of schools in England as staff joined other workers in the biggest strike day for a decade. Today, though, the Mail reports that the government are planning a new law to stop further strike mayhem, while others are blaming the chaos on a succession of six education secretaries in the last four years. Well, I'm joined now by the current person in charge, Gillian Keegan. It's your 100th day in the job, I believe. It are is, you yes. going to be able to stick around and get this sorted? I hope so. And um, I'm very much determined to get it sorted. So since the 9th of Jan, I've had a number of meetings with unions and we've also had official meetings as well. Um, it was clear in the meeting I had on Monday that they said basically they couldn't do anything to stop strike action they right. were determined to go ahead there was a big sort of you know lots of people on strike uh, yesterday but between now and the next strike we've got 28 days okay. and um you know i've said to them very clearly you know inflation busting sort of um pay rises are not on the cards because that would be the wrong thing for everybody we need to get inflation down get rid of the problem right. but all the other things that they're interested in talking about workload um, pay for the future, how we retain, how we recruit the best teachers, um, any sort of how we help more with special educational needs. All of those things are things that we are jointly interested because in working on. teachers are leaving. I mean, they're demoralised and they're at breaking point. And I mean, what was it? Almost half of teachers are thinking about leaving in the next five years. We don't have enough teachers. Um, yesterday, we talked to a fellow called Mr P. He's a big sort of mm. TikTok teacher. Um, and he was just saying he can't do his job. His name's Lee Parkinson. This is what he had to say. Well, they come out with, you know, teachers are great, they're superheroes, they're, it's yeah. a vocation. Mm -hmm. And that's just gaslighting teachers to expect them to do more with less. So you've got that issue of the underfunding the workload, the pressure and scrutiny teachers are under because of the likes of Ofsted, where teachers are now working on an average between 50 to 60 hours a week. And teachers don't mind working hard. You know, we're hardworking people. If we know the work we're doing is going to have a direct impact on the children in class. I mean, I think, I think Mr P there talks for so many teachers. Yes, yeah, and actually, reasonably. They're at the end of their tether. Mm -hmm. You know, they're working in classrooms where they don't sometimes even have books. You know, teachers are having to look after kids, sometimes from their own pockets, making them breakfast. I mean, it's it can't go on. It can't go on. We have to sort it, don't we? Well, so let's look at funding, because one of the things that I've noticed actually through this action is a lot of people haven't realised. The first day I was in the job, so it's the 100th day yeah. today, I had a letter from all the unions, and basically they were saying we need another two billion pounds okay. next year and the year after, both to fund the pay rises, which are 5% for experienced teachers and 8.9% for new teachers. And they'd only put 3% in their budget. So to fund the mm. extra pay rise and also the inflationary pressures and all those other pressures yeah. you talk about, we need two billion pounds. So obviously it was difficult, the autumn statement, I'm new in the job. And I went and said, right, okay, we need this two billion pounds for mm. schools. We want our schools to be funded of course, well. We want vital. our kids to have the yeah. best education. We want our teachers to be happy in their mm. jobs and to feel they've got their supported in their jobs and we got that the two billion pounds we've got for next year and the year after but I'm not sure everybody really knows we've got it because they haven't yet got it in their budget so it's okay. coming so the, the the what the unions asked for is exactly what we got for them um, so I'm hopeful that that will relieve the pressure 58.8 billion pounds is what we spend on our school system more than we've ever spent in our history and we often get referred back to you know 10 years ago or 2010 we were spending 35 billion pounds then so obviously inflation's happened but it's a massive massive increase so they are well funded and mostly when you go but into you schools, look at schools i mean you know well do, do you because i go yes. into schools all the time and they're amazing most I of our them team amazing. have got ch have got children at school and they're getting instead of getting books they've got photocopied pieces of paper the printers don't work and these kids it's, sometimes they don't have pens, depending on where they are. I mean, the thing about that, you're saying that, that there's money, but is it actually going to go to the right place? Will you listen to the teachers and then they'll tell you, this is what we need right here at the coalface. Make sure this money isn't just frittered away, it just doesn't go into a black hole. Well, the money does come either directly to schools or for some bits of it, it goes via the local authorities for special educational needs. And actually that was something we had to fix because they were saying, we're actually not getting it. So we said, we wrote last time and said, it actually needs to go to the schools um, because they, they can do the best with it. I mean, 
I go into schools a lot, and as a, as a as an MP before, you know, I was education secretary. I, I actually think they're night and day compared to when we were at school. I think I look at them. I, I think they're well, amazing. When I was at school, they're amazing. Even, even though I was in a, in a very poor part of Glasgow, our school was properly staffed. But I it think... was well run. We had pencils and pens yes. and books. Kids don't have that now in well, certain they do. pockets. They do. When you go in, you get. I mean, literally, when you go in, they do have a, a lot of that. The facilities are amazing. Depends where you are. Depends where you go. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in Knowsley, which is, you know, like Glasgow, um, you know, seems a, a very poor part of the country. Um, and I go into schools there a lot because a lot of my cousins are teachers as well. Um, so, you know, I go in and, 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 you know, I've seen their schools. We, we do. We do. There's a lot better facilities for children. They're, 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 that's true. But there's no... I mean, Mr P, as, as he said there, you know, I, I want him to feel not just the words. I want him to feel like he's truly... Yeah, and truly valued. valued. Because do you remember during the pandemic, we applauded the NHS. Of yeah. course we did. We realised what an amazing job teachers were doing yeah. because a lot of my team... Because then you had to do it you know, yourself, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. It was homeschooling. So let's make sure that they are yes. valued. Now, the other thing I know that you want to talk about today is this new strategy on childcare, on the whole social care system, because that is vital and that yes. goes hand in hand with making sure that kids are okay and getting a decent education. So what is being done for them? You know, children, like I said, teachers are having to pay for their breakfast, teachers are bringing in pens, teachers are having to take care of these kids? They're almost yeah. like babysitters sometimes. Well, life's become much more complex in many yeah. ways, right? And there are many kids with more needs, whether it's special educational needs or, you know, they're in the care system. And after a number of reviews, there's been three major reviews, um, what we want to do is reform our children's social care system. So that's when... Um, f the first thing is when children, uh, families are struggling yep. at the beginning. Um, you know, mum might be uh, struggling with domestic abuse, with, with mental health, with addiction, with all kinds of things. Sure. So the very first part of it is to really focus on trying to help the mum. Right. Not to judge the mum, not to intervene, to help to see if we can keep those families together, to see whether we can help people at this big change in their life, this big moment in their life. So that's the very first thing. If for some reason somebody, a child has to be taken away from their parent, um, which, you know, will be, you know, a hard thing to do, the very first thing we want to do is really look at wider family. And that doesn't happen today. Usually they look at sort of, you know, foster care or whatever, but the wider family, you know, right. the friends, so the relatives, maybe. grandparents, yeah. aunts, uncles, godparents, all the people who love the child already, right. who know the child already, to put a lot more support into making sure we've got mm. uh, kinship carers. So we're starting off with support and training, but we will also look at what else we need to do. Then foster caring, making sure that there is much more support. We have brilliant foster carers and they really are amazing. They take on a child, they really mm. uh, love and nurture them. But we need to support them more. We need to support them more in, in networks. We need to uh, we, we're increase in allowances and stuff like that. Just make sure they're better yeah. supported. But and have then you got the staff for that? Well, that comes so the, down to that again. It does. Doesn't it? I mean, I know does. if you're saying to the kid, right, OK, we can use families. Yeah. And in a way, that, that actually does make sense. But obviously, every child is different. But you need, you're going to need somebody to assess that. Yeah. And that's the difficulty. Because, again, social workers, like teachers, like nurses, like everyone else, they're getting disillusioned and they're leaving. Right. How do so we hold on to them? That's really, really important. So we've got two... I mean, the social workers do an amazing job. And there's social workers and there's family help uh, support workers as well. But they need more support themselves, mm -hmm. right? So when they're in setting a situation, there's police, there's the school, there's health, there's all those things. So what we're trying to do is bring them all together. They all have a piece of the puzzle and they all can make that decision probably better collectively. So that's a big change in how we're helping social workers make some, some of those big calls. Because right. obviously you do have awful cases as well. You do, and um, we only ever hear about, sadly, social work when it goes wrong. Exactly, we don't hear yeah. about, because the, these, I mean, the, the workload, you know, teachers are talking about workload and it's just as bad, if not worse. And the stress of the work, you know, mm. imagine having to make that call. Yeah. And, and now we, I mean, the very first visit I went on actually was to, um, you know, a centre where they basically had the police, health, social worker, they all sat round together, they all looked at various aspects and made a balanced decision, you know, does mum need more help? Yeah. Is this person the problem? Can we do something about that? Is it the, is it the gangs outside? Is it, is it something outside of the home? It's not always in the home. Yeah. Can we do something to help the family escape that? You say so, we, though, who? Who's going to be doing that? Because well, that's a really tough job but that, well, that's us that's basically us the government we right. we are the parents in this case of these children mm -hmm. you know we need to help them or if they're going to be in care we're, we're the parents and we need to see it like that loving families 
both of us are here, right? Because we grew up in a loving family. Yeah, there wasn't course, much money. Lucky. There wasn't yeah. any, you know, we probably both left school, school at 16, but we had loving parents. Yeah. They made every difference to every aspect of our life and still do today. Sure. That's what everybody needs. No, and I we, agree with We you. need to play that role It's not just better. about money, though. It's about compassion and it's it about is. staff. It seems to me that when, when you were talking at the start that you feel very optimistic that you can actually possibly prevent more strike action from, from teachers. Now, whether that's negotiating or whether it's, as we've seen in the front page of The Independent today, um, it's actually releasing tough laws, actually preventing workers from going on strike and the tactics of not negotiating, um, that has to surely change. But you f it seems to me that you feel optimistic that you can sort this. As far as, teach, as far as teachers... The go. Monday before the strike, we had a meeting. Now, yeah. even the unions that were touring the, the, the round yesterday, even they said at the beginning of that, after they left, that it was a constructive meeting. Right. It was constructive because we were talking about things we can talk about. Future pay, workload, um, helping um, get rid of unnecessary bureaucracy, more flexibility. They're drowning in red tape. Drowning. Yeah. That's what they're saying. It's so difficult. And who wants do to do job? that, right? Who no. wants red tape? I mean, you do need... I mean, Mr P mentioned offset. You do need offset, right? You of do course. need to know yeah. that the schools, that there's, there's a, 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 you know, a system that people can tell, parents can tell about, you know, what the school is and what's going to... But... But that's one thing, but they are, you know, there's other bureaucracy. We have actually, there was a lot of work done before the pandemic and we took five hours out of a, a working week for a teacher by getting rid of some stuff. Yeah. But we know there's more to do and technology, we know we can do more. But I do want to solve this. I, you can't have a world-class education system without teachers. No. Teachers are of course. everything yeah. to our to our children. We used and they, to be they the envy of the world. We used to be the envy of the world, but sadly we're not now. I really hope you can get it sorted out for I all our sakes. I will try my best. For all of our sakes, because it can't, we cannot, kids can't lose any more education, not after what they went through the pandemic. Thank you for coming in though. Thank you. Really appreciate you coming in and, and we having this conversation. Thank, Thank you. you.